scope of discussion to discuss the pertinent issue affecting most Nigerians, which is a hike in the cost of transportation. Now, this is owing to the hike in the pump price of PMS. Whilst the NNPC and Dangote refineries continue to engage in the controversial price template arguments and the lifting of over 16.3 million liters of petrol from the Ibejuleki plant in Lagos. There are huge concerns about how healthy this is for the Nigerian market. Would we see a monopoly? Are the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association right for calling for sales directly to them as they've looked to knock NNPC over the new price template? How many Nigerians can afford the 950 naira per litre owing to their current wage, which is yet to be reviewed, to 70,000 naira? Well, this morning, we have a freelance oil and gas consultant, Engineer Godwin Ebay, joining from Lagos. Hello, Engineer Ebay, can you hear us? Well, very well, good to see you, and thanks for choosing to join us on the show this morning. Well, let's first of all get your thoughts about this controversy as it continues to ensue between the NNPCL, which continues to remain the sole importer of petrol into the country and now the sole buyer from Dangote Refinery. Amid this monopoly is a new price template. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, we can't hear you. We're checking that the connection is uh, all right at your end. Whilst we can see you, the image seems to be shaky, but check that you have not muted yourself so we can hear you. Now, whilst uh, Mr. Uh, 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 the connection would have him rejoin us once his audio is better, but currently now uh, petrol currently is selling at 959 in Lagos, 1019 naira in Borno State. Engineer uh, Godwin Ebay, if you can, can hear me now, and we can hear you as well. Let's get your thoughts on this. Can you hear me now, please? Very well, we can hear you. Very well, we can hear you. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, it's nice being uh, with you this morning. A pleasure to um, have you. A pleasure to have you. The, uh, the issue of Dangundi Refinery, first and foremost, let me start from the positive uh, aspect. I think it's a good thing that we have a refinery uh, in Nigeria functional, uh, more so when we have not had one for the past uh, minimum of nine years. Uh, the the um, Kaduna refinery has been down since uh, 2003, and then the um, the uh, uh, worry refinery has been down since 2015. So to that extent, uh, it's good that we have a refinery now, and I'm actually proud that we have a Dangdi refinery. Uh, I think every right thinking Nigeria should also be happy that we have a refinery of our own. You know, having said that. Um, uh, the issues uh, surrounding the refinery, uh, I think it could be far better managed. Um, you know, right here, we, we are not used to um, engaging ourselves in dialogue and uh, a conflict resolution. We think everything that happens has to be a fight, you know, but uh, that is not, that's not, that's not a conventional way of resolving issues. When there are issues, they need to be, they have to be tete a tete, hard to hard discussion and in spirit of openness, honesty, and integrity, you know, so that uh, the issues can be uh, collectively resolved. Because if things don't go well, uh, nobody enjoys it. You know, uh, both NNPC, Dangote, the, the Nigerian people, they don't enjoy it. So I think uh, there should be better engagement in trying to resolve the issues of, uh, of uh, uh, petroleum pricing. If you ask me, I think, uh, uh, the petroleum price now is, is on the high end, especially uh, uh, if you juxtapose this with the state of the economy and the suffering of the people. I was talking to a colleague, uh, a retired director in the Lagos State Ministry uh, 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 this, this morning, earlier this morning, and we, we both collectively agreed that people are suffering. They're suffering in the land. They're suffering in the land. The, the fuel price goes up. Uh, uh, teachers won't even have... Uh, Money to take transport to school or buy petrol for their cars, so the uh, the the, um, the education will be affected. Parents cannot have enough money to give their children to go to school. Uh, cost of living will continue to increase; it's already very high. So I think uh, the government should uh, do something uh, to alleviate the suffering of the people. It's not just a matter of uh, 
increasing the petroleum price, and, uh, and, and, and that's it. You know, they should think of how to alleviate uh, the suffering of the people. Everywhere in the world, uh, there is some level of uh, subsidy by government. You know, so government shouldn't pass the bulk of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the issues to be resolved uh, to the people. That's what I would say there uh, for, uh, you know, on that point. Now, Engineer Ibo, whilst I agree with you, it is quite historic that in over three decades, Nigeria has a functioning refinery. We failed to put four refineries to work despite the amount of money invested in turnaround maintenance. But in the subsidy regime, which has been declared to have been gone by President Bola Metinibu, many Nigerians are also turning their attention to alternatives as promised by the administration to ease the plight of Nigerians with a high cost of transportation. You're talking about some sort of government intervention. But what are your suggestions to the government of the day in terms of some of the aforementioned initiatives, much like the presidential CNG initiative, which Nigerians continue to anticipate? How much more can the government intervene to bring down the cost of transportation? Government should uh, scale down the expenditure. If you ask me, I think um, uh, the government is uh, slightly on the profligacy uh, end of the rule. You know, um, the kind of expenditures that we, um, we see, uh, could, uh, it could be done better. You know, I, w I won't cite examples, but I'm sure many of us know what I'm talking about. You know, the government should try and focus on the needful. Uh, the, the, the government is existing to, to support the populace. If the populist uh, people are suffering and they don't have a good life, what is the use of governance? You know, the governance should focus on areas that can better alleviate the suffering of the people. And there is suffering in the land. You know, some of us, every day, people talk to us to help them in one form or the other. And that's about providing for one thing or the other. And uh, a lot of times we cannot say no because their cases are genuine. Even though we might not be able to meet um, all the requirements, all the de all their demands, you know. So government should look in house. First of all, stop unnecessary expenditures. Have a check on 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 their on the on the people on, on their um, on the ministers and heads of government. You know, things like going to do conference in the UK, a conference that could be done in Lagos or in, in Ubudu or or in Abuja. You see them, you know, uh, shooting off to to UK or elsewhere for say two or three hundred people and that affects our foreign exchange uh, situation you know so i think there should be more discipline uh, in, in in expenditure profile uh, of the go of the various governments uh, of, in the land and then discipline for example we have we have uh, Bo uh, maduguri being flooded recently from all indications you know uh, the signs were there there have been reports that uh, the that part of the dam was collapsing but I mean, it wasn't taken serious. It's now that the, 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 the habit has happened, you know, that uh, we are not running health as Keta. I seem to say um, uh, we didn't know about them, you know. So the, the, the issue of Maduguri was, was well known before, before it's happening, you know, before it happened, rather. So I think that discipline, decency, decorum will help us, uh, you know, to, uh, to do better in, our, in managing the... Uh, the, the um, the state of the nation right now. Thank you. Now, I'm talking foreign now, exchange talking in relation to the relation controversy to... between NNPCL and Dangote Refinery. A lot of persons were thrown aback between the price disparity as to how much a liter was sold to the NNPCL. Uh, let's get your thoughts. The NNPCL being the sole buyer of Dangote's PMS as it stands now is saying that they bought it in dollars and hence the variation in what is expected to hit the Nigerian market. Now, and whilst this price continues to remain a big point of controversy, how do you think that going forward, the trade between NNPC and Dangoche should be carried out? Should it be in dollars or in Naira? I think both parties should come together and discuss dialogue and sit down and discuss the pricing uh, 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 for the petroleum products. It's, it's not rocket science. You know, the, the, the problem is uh, everybody is, 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 is working in his own silo. NNPC is doing their beat, Dangote is doing his beat, and then there's conflict, and then it's, uh, it's, um, 
neither here nor there. So they should come together and discuss. You know, doing petroleum uh, uh, products pricing is not rocket science. It's something that with, um, with uh, openness of uh, mind, integrity, and, uh, and honesty, they can, they can sit together, discuss, and come up with a pricing that is acceptable to both parties, and which they can uh, transmit to the populace uh, for their acceptance. You know, but everyone is doing his own bit, and then there's conflict, and then there's so much noise, and uh, you know, nobody really enjoys it. Thank you. The NNPC says the NNPC. it bought it at 898 naira per liter and is now pegging it at a selling price of 959 Lagos. In places like Meduguri, it goes for as high as 1019 naira. The Independent Petrol Marketers Association has also issued a statement saying that they want in. They said that NNPC should be more like a regulator and allow the market to have players who are licensed to buy directly from Dangote. In terms of the market dynamics, what does this call from Ipman do? Like I said, the NNPC, Dangote, and even the petroleum marketer should come together. We, we have that much experience over the years in terms of petroleum products and pricing. So they should come together and discuss, you know, and reach a consensus on what is best. You know, but uh, everyone argues on, on, his, on, on their own. And then all you, all you, have is, you, you end up having is uh, crisis and confusion. You know, they say one price today, another day they say another price, and then you, know, you, you don't know which one to take, and then things don't, uh, don't pan out well. So they should sit down, discuss, and agree on what is reasonable and with, uh, with um, 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 seriousness and integrity and uh, openness you know, uh, they should be able to re reach out, uh, reach out the, at the um, price that should be acceptable to, firstly, to those parties, and then they, they look at ways to, um, you know, to uh, sell it to the people who, who will be the end users. You know, bearing in mind that things are so tough in the economy right now. Thank you. Bye. The federal government has loaded this initiative with the coming on board of the $20 billion largest single train refinery of a 650 barrel per day capacity as its commitments towards ensuring industrialization in Nigeria continues to grow. Do you think indeed that with Dangote coming on board, this pledge of industrialization has received the much needed boost? To have industrialization, you must have steady, steady, um, steady power. No power, no industrialization. Indeed, the Dangote refinery will have a multiplying effect on the economy. Number one, it will help the foreign exchange uh, status. It's going to create jobs. It's going to um, allow us to have experience in uh, um, petroleum refinery. And then which you can build on. Yes, indeed, Dangote refinery will have a multiplying effect in the economy. But Dangote refinery functioning well does not uh, tantamount to, to industrialization because if you don't have power, we don't have power in the nation. You know, you don't have power. You don't have power in the nation. Nothing will work. Industrialization will not be there. You know, the basis of uh, industrialization, one of the key legs of industrialization and one of the most important legs is having steady power supply so that even, even, even small scale manufacturers can be doing their business. You know, and their impact on the economy is, is can be, I mean, can be tremendous. You know, so, um, yes, Dangote refinery is good to have. Yes, if it's functioning well, it's good for us. But uh, I think it's the the industrialization is, is much more than having a good refinery. Even then, countries that have industrialized don't don't have one refinery. They have so many refineries littered all over the place. So if this refinery doesn't function, you know, the other, one, the other ones uh, fill the gap. So we need steady power supply in this country. And unfortunately, we have not been able to achieve that, even though we have spent so much money, you know, in trying to get um, steady uh, power supply. Thank you.
Now, engineer eBay, let's look at another now, comment as it concerns eBay, other products that are coming in from the Dangote refinery. I don't know if you Dangote listened to comments made by the vice chairman of Dangote Group, Deva Kumar Edwin, who said that a conglomerate of oil marketers are boycotting products from the Dangote refinery, in particular, AGO, or should I say diesel, despite the price being relatively cheaper than alternatives that are imported into the country. Uh, care to make any comments on this? Well, um, the issue of uh, diesel against petrol is something that um, I have to really um, uh, take in isolation. Diesel has its own role to play, and then uh, most people use uh, petrol, you know, because people have cars, they have motorbikes, and all that. So um, the pricing of uh, diesel. Uh, you know, even though it's right now supposedly cheaper than petrol, but um, I think the more focus should be on trying to um, harmonize uh, the petrol uh, PMS price that will be acceptable to the people. Now, now, do you believe that now, now, in believe any way Mr. Deva Kumar Edwin was insinuating that uh, some powers at play are frustrating? the workings of the Dangote refinery by trying to make such comments because even Dangote itself had alleged that uh, setting cabals in the oil industry are stronger than those in the drug market. There's been a lot of talks um, about uh, trying to frustrate um, you know, the operations of Dangote refinery. Um, there could be some, some, some measure of uh, some level of uh, truth in that. For example, we hear we hear that uh, uh, the blending of um, petrol in, uh, in in mortar, and we hear at the time they said Dangote uh, product is inferior, and then Dangote went out to prove beyond doubt that uh, his his uh, product is in fact more is superior to the one that they, they bring in. You know, um, again, it's. Uh, is, is born out of uh, unnecessary um, uh, competition, unhealthy competition. Those who are importing fuel, in my view, do not want the, the case of importation of fuel to stop. They still want to be importing fuel and they're making their tons of money to the detriment of, um, of the nation and its, and its economy. And in fact, such sabotage uh, uh, measures or activities can be classified as uh, uh, you know, economic terrorism. Because if you do anything that doesn't favor the economy, that has severe adverse effect on the economy, you know, you can easily regard that and see that as an economic uh, terrorism, you know, which is not uh, healthy for the, for the economy of Nigeria. You know, so I think we should all um, shit our thoughts and see our, our country as, um, as us, you should, you, should, you should show patriotism and then do things that will be of uh, benefit, you know, to the country uh, at large and not just our individual uh, desires or individual uh, benefits, so to say. Now, in, in terms of now, in terms legislative, legislative diplomacy legislative and interventions yeah. by the National Assembly, the National Assembly has issued summons and uh, in terms of dialoguing with the stakeholders and power that be, in Nigeria's petroleum industry, it almost feels as though that uh, for some time now it's been difficult getting all players to come to a round table to either probe certain issues or even resolve them. Uh, do you think that this is another clog in the wheel that is slowing down the future of Nigeria's fuel supply? Why? Well, the National Assembly could do better. Um, our experience. Um, is uh, that uh, maybe they should uh, focus on the needful, and when they do that focus, it should be uh, it should be uh, sacrificial, not uh, having in mind what individuals will benefit from from that. You know, so um, they should uh, look at things uh, a bit more uh, patriotically, and then do things that will will um, be of immense benefit to our economy and the nation. Um, I think I think the National Assembly could do better in that respect. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, I think it's much more of collaboration. Every, everybody should come and collaborate. 
you know, with spirit of patriotism in mind. You know, but when we don't have that, when we have our, our personal uh, desires and interests at heart, then things don't work out. You know, it, it, resolution is not as difficult as as uh, we are meant to see or meant to believe. You know, uh, conflict resolution is something that is uh, happens every time, anywhere, no matter how small, big organization, even in families. You know, issues are bound to come up, but you must sit down, discuss, dialogue, deliberate. You know, in in an in an honest and sincere manner. You know, and looking at the general uh, benefit to the people in mind, not, just, not our individual desires. Now, Engineer Ibe, let's now, also take a look Ibe, at some of the working relationships the between work. NNPC and marketers. As of last week, there were reports circulating some sections of the media that NNPC had to suspend its new petrol orders owing to a backlog of debts owed to marketers. All Nigerians would relate to the fuel queues and the scarcity that hit the market a couple of weeks ago as well, according to that report, owing to the old debt. On this issue of repayment of debts by the NNPC to a lot of marketers who normally supply on credit, what would you prefer as a solution in managing that relationship? In the first place, NNPC came out way too late to tell the people that they are owing six point something billion dollars. And after the made an announcement, just a matter of, I think, 48 or 72 hours, they came out with the price, the new price. You know, some people think that, um, that 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 announcement came way too late. You know, that is the, the necessity that costs, I mean, comes, I mean, uh, places us on the necessity of, um, you know, doing things, uh, doing the right things at the right time. You ask me, the announcement came too late. And it looks like the, the announcement just came as, as a phobia to announcing uh, the price of uh, petroleum products, which, uh, of course, will not be that much acceptable you know, to the society and to the people who are going to be using that, uh, that uh, uh, PMS. All right, Engineer Ibe, just stay with us. Uh, we're also joined by another guest, Mr. Chooks, a maker who is an oil and gas consultant also joining us on the program from Lagos this morning. Uh, Mr. Chooks, welcome to the show. Can you hear us? Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, Very well, nice then. Nice Let, nice then. Let's get your thoughts as well. With us as well. This controversy over pricing between NNPCL and Dangote. Let's quickly get your thoughts as we look to broaden the conversation. Okay, let me let okay, me let me, some, let me make some make some few some analysis few analysis on this. And uh, in a couple of and, uh, in a couple of the uh, things of what the things of downs like some downs like in terms of where what uh, the what 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 Dangote and NMPC are not being transparent to Nigerians. This is uh, is is a shame. They're not being transparent to Nigerians. They're not telling Nigerians the truth. What I think is that Dangote knows that producing products in Nigeria is far cheaper than importing products. What a 650,000 barrels per day production gives for PMS is 9,000 metric tons of PMS. And production cost, as far as he's doing it in Nigeria, is lesser. We are looking at production cost now to be around, around 450 naira per production of a liter of PMS. This is a straightforward calculation. What I understood, understand Dangote is doing is because he is a capitalist and he wants a, a measure of play and monopoly in the business. That's the reason why he's behaving the way he's behaving. The truth there is that currently, as of today, the plant price, the plant price, international plant price for PMS anywhere in the world is 780 naira per liter. That's the international plant price. 
and most most uh, and in most times when they bring this thing at 780 per liter there is always what we call a less hundred less hundred in it it's something when i say 780 780 dollars per metric tons there's a less hundred on it these guys are not be, are not telling us the truth they are be, they are playing with our intelligence they feel everybody here in nigeria is a, is a, is not is not intelligent enough to understand what is going on in the oil and gas global market the truth is npc and Dangote are playing games with the intelligence of nigerians it's a very funny thing i've said this in different platforms before for NM, for Dangote to tell us that he's selling, is there, there for Dangote to tell or NMP to say they are buying this thing and are going to sell it as nine 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 fifty? It's a slap on our face because so many costs has been taken away. If this product is being imported, a lot of things have been taken away. The cost of raising a standard a standby letter of credit is taken away. The cost of freight is taken away. The cost of logistics is taken away. You just go to a refinery in Nigeria here and buy this product and are telling us are going to sell it at the same price they are selling it outside the country. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Even so at the time, time on Sunday when Nigerians received the news that 16.3 meter a million liters of petrol was lifted from Dangote refinery. The price even at then cost confusion. The NMPC on one side said they bought it at 868 naira per liter. Dangote issued a press statement saying no, they sold it at 760 naira per liter. In a follow up to that, we're now told that uh, that money was actually in dollars and the conversion is what was bringing the disparity in prices. Now, who do you think, in your opinion, is not totally being sincere as to how much it was bought, which is now warranting this price of 950 in Lagos and 1019 Naira in Borno? It's not telling the truth. I have to say it with all honesty. It's not, being, it's not telling the truth, and that is how capitalists behave. They try to manipulate the intelligence of the, of the, of the citizens and understand this game. And that is why they are playing it this way. NMPC is just falling into the hands of Dangote's money. Uh, theatrics. The truth there is that that product that you are saying is is, is supposed to, to come out from to the refinery. refinery. What happens in terms of regulation and monitoring? Because the NMPC is now asking that its monitoring team be placed at Dangote's refinery for regulation and transparency in the process of lifting, and also in terms of the price this product will be before being resold to some independent patrol marketers who are also asking into the market. That is the reason NMPC is doing what they are doing. They want to make sure they monitor what is going on. Let me, let me even emphasize this. Dangote is claiming that the products that they sold to them currently, because what Dangote is claiming currently is that the products sold to them as at, as at now, before October 1st, was sold to them in dollars. But I, I, but I have to also ask Dangote a clear question. 30 million barrels of crude oil was given to you immediately from the day of the announcement of the presidential executive order given by the president. 30 million barrels was given to you by NMPC. Now, we, what we know that Dangote is doing is what we call uh, uh, keeping up of feed stock. You keep your feed stock because what you need per day is not 30 million barrels. What you need per day is 650,000 barrels. Now, Dangote is telling us that what he bought from NMPC from the day of the from, from the day the president gave that executive order that he should be so put up in Naira. Is that telling us that that particular day does not it doesn't fall in that it's gonna fall in from the first of October? That is not being realistic. The, the truth says that that is deceiving everybody. And NMPC is falling falling into his theatrics. NMPC doesn't understand the play. That's why they are falling into this trick. NMPC wants to help Nigerians. That is what I know. They want to help Nigerians and make sure that this product is not being overpriced. Because that's the reason why. That's the reason why NMPC entered into that contract. The contract was to hold this price. Because if you leave this thing open, people will go to Kaduna, people will go to Sokoto and sell this product at 1,500 naira and make, and make margin, excessive profits. And that is the reason why NMPC is keeping the price within this range. So that Nigerians can afford it. Now it is not being realistic. That's the truth. He's not being realistic. He wants to make all the profits in one shot, which is wrong. He should also consider that he is doing this thing in favor of in favor of Nigerians. Nigerians need this help. 
Nigeria's Navy, we have waited too long for this for this refinery to come on board. We have waited too long, and we think it is necessary for him to for, to show a sign of empathy. This month, President Bola Metinibu had instructed a meeting with stakeholders, and uh, his vice, Senator Kashim Shetima, was to meet with them. We also saw comments coming in from Senator Heineken Lopobiri in order to address this fuel hike, and it was with the promise that by October, a price template will be agreed upon. But even before that October deadline, this template we're seeing now, do you have hopes that in line with President Bola Metinibu's drive to, it, to address the petrol hike, would see a more suitable price for Nigerians at this moment? Anyway, the line is echoing. Let me just 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 few things you have said. The president the directive directive concerning the poor price concerning the poor price is not clear yet. It's not clear yet. We are not we are not certain we are not certain concerning what we are going to buy this this PMS in the long run. We are not certain yet. Because what we've been hearing, what we've been hearing so far is statements from NMPC, statements from Federal Inland Revenue Director, statements from the regulatory agencies. We have not known we have not now. known as that now. What is the final what is the final cost? cost? That is the work that is supposed to be the work is of the minister of information. Minister of information. The Minister of Information is supposed to the communicate to Nigeria and tell Nigeria that the selling price of TMS from today is going to be the TMS. Took Semeka's end. Uh, not to forget that we're still with engineer Godwin Ebay as well. It's a three way conversation this morning one over the phone, the other virtually. All from Lagos joining our Abuja studios. I'll come back to you, engineer Godwin Ebay, this morning. Having listened to Mr. Mecca Chooks this morning, he thinks that it is all a ploy by a businessman in his words who is looking to maximize profits, not minding the fact that the executive orders issued by President Bola Metinibu also saw Dangote receive 30 million barrels of crude oil to boost production. Now, the controversies continue to ensue. Let's get your thoughts in this regards. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, it, it takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. Let's uh, uh, accept for a moment that uh, Dan Kudi is not being uh, sincere uh, about all that is uh, saying about the petroleum price. Uh, we also know that uh, there's quite a bit of uh, opaqueness in operations of the NMPC. You know, so um, it's, it's uh, more like Dangote trying to protect his business as a businessman, uh, you know, um, against the uh, NMPC that uh, we can't really see. They are, they are approaching with high level of uh, openness and sincerity. We've also had the, the, uh, the, the issue of, um, of uh, some people in the, in, in the NMPC also involved in importing of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of, of petroleum products. So, bottom line is that uh, there is no sincerity, you know, uh, amongst the two. You know, that's why I say it takes you to tango. Dangote, on one hand, you know, in an effort to protect his business, may do things that um, that are not quite uh, quite uh, uh, sincere. On the other hand, NMPC should also operate. Uh, you know, with, uh, with openness of uh, uh, heart and then uh, with level of integrity. I think that quite a bit of suspicion between those two. NMPC doesn't trust Dangote. Dangote doesn't trust NMPC. So it makes it very difficult to resolve, uh, you know, the, the challenge uh, we have on our hands, which is finding uh, or agreeing on a suitable pricing of, of, of petroleum products. So uh, the two of them should come closer to reality you know, and, and closer to doing things the right way. You know, I, I can, I can, I can beat my hand on my chest and say, okay, NMPC, you, you, you don't have any blame. Dangote has NMPC has. That's why I started 
ab initio that two of them should come to discuss dialogue and deliberate you know in sincerity you know, to be able to reach a landing but when we have personal interest uh, in the forefront then it makes it very very difficult to reach uh, a consensus that's what i think this was the issue in which he said that the president's instruction uh, on this matter is not quite clear and at this point, one will be thinking what the role of the Federal Executive Council is as a position of stance on the matter. We've seen calls from the NDA, members of the House of Reps who are calling for a reversal of this price hike. But on the standpoint from a government angle, what would be your call to the Federal Executive Council on this price war that is ongoing? Ongoing. Yeah, the, the president can give his uh, executive order, but that doesn't stop there. If if the people who are operating, who are going to um, to uh, obey the executive order, if they, if they are not sincere and honest with themselves, then it wouldn't work. If the executive order can 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 be given by president, but if both an NPC and the, and the, uh, uh, Dangote do not come together in, in sincerity with, with honesty, then it won't it will, it will be difficult to, to work. Just take the example of I think there's an executive order of a president on, on pharmaceuticals. On pharmaceutical products are supposed to come cheaper, but you know, in spite of the executive order like three months ago, you see have a high price of uh, 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 pharmaceuticals, you know, still still going up and up and up. So yes, the president can give an executive order, but I don't think it starts and stops there. You know, the people who are going to implement the executive order, you know, have to uh, be, be serious-minded, you know, and do it with um, with uh, level of uh, uh, high level of sincerity and integrity. Otherwise, the executive order will just be there, you know, and then we see the president has given an executive order. This also on the wider Nigerian society. We've talked at it from the executive angle. We've looked at the stakeholders in question and the major key players. But on the average Nigerians, we saw two states uh, much ahead of the resumption of the 2024-2025 academic session choose to postpone the resumption of students. In Edo State, it was rightly blamed on the hike in petrol prices and the cost of fees, which has risen. But... Uh, Let's get your thoughts on this. Whilst Nigerian households continue to grapple with a 50% hike in transportation costs, how does uh, the average family man who is waiting for the implementation of 70,000 naira minimum wage brace up for the impacts? Before the 70,000 naira um, uh, uh, minimum wage uh, by the president, I agree with the president, the price of uh, petrol was, I think, um, uh, 500 and something and then we say okay we have a 70,000 naira minimum wage and uh, right there on, almost immediately you have a petroleum price hike of course the so-called benefits of uh, increase of the minimum wage has, has already been, uh, been subsumed by the immediate increase in petroleum price and of course uh, transportation will go up it will ripple into price of uh, products in the market you know, uh, food stuff and everything, price of services, you know, in, in, in the market, you go up. In fact, everything has gone up. You know, so the, the people right now are, are, are not enjoying what is happening. You know, I have had market women say this, all, this, all these things are very frustrating to them. You know, imagine cost of, uh, cost of uh, uh, Gary, those of you that uh, you know buy Gary, the pint of Gary used to be 400, 400 naira, you know. But now it's like uh, between 3,800 and 4,000 naira. That's ten times. You know, transportation that used to in some area that used to be like uh, like uh, 300, 400 is now 1,000 plus. You know, so there's a ripple into everything that is happening. You know, so um, I think um, the people are not enjoying what is happening one little bit. And I think everyone that is concerned should do something. Government, NMPC, Dangote, 
should do something to alleviate the suffering of the people. Otherwise, uh, it will be of no of no use in in, in having a refinery of our own. Nigerians have been critical of is the position of organized labor and trade union congresses. Many Nigerians reacting to this are saying that the organized labor hasn't been fair to the average Nigerian. Issues apart from the increment of minimum wage bordering on CNG bosses and other uh, associates interventions of the federal government have failed to come by. But yet it seems as though the organized labor was very okay when they received increments in wages and jettisoned other requests as submitted by the Tripartite Committee on the Negotiation for Minimum Wage. Well, it may seem as though Engineer eBay's connection is also facing quite the difficulties. If we can have him rejoin us, it would be nice to get his thoughts on this. I lost your voice there. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, what's up? They say that the organized labor was well okay with the increment of 70,000 naira minimum wage and jettisoned other requirements in that agreement as agreed upon by the Tripartite Committee on Minimum Wage. Do you think that the organized labor and trade union congresses are guilty of these assertions by some Nigerians? If you ask me, I'm not sure the organized labor have done too well. For example, accepting the 70,000 Naira, and according to them, um, it was on the basis that there had been no increase in fuel price, you know, and uh, soon after that, uh, 70,000 Naira was agreed on, which in, in, in itself is, is on the low end, you know, because with 70 Naira, what are you going to do with 70,000 Naira for those with the, with the level? Of, uh, of uh, I mean, uh, expense uh, in the in of our products, you know. So the um, the the organized labor should uh, should have been far more resilient, far more aggressive in their argument. I think they started with from two hundred fifty thousand naira per month, and then suddenly they accepted uh, uh, seventy thousand naira, you know, as um, as a minimum wage. You know, I think I think organized labor should ought to have done better than they did in uh, in, in speaking for the people. That's my view. All right, Engineer Godwin Ebay, we right, must Engineer thank you for your time on the program this morning. We appreciate you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. All right, let's cross over back to Mr. Chooks and Mecca, who is still on the line with us from Lagos this morning. He is an oil and gas expert and was sharing his thoughts earlier before he got rudely interrupted by the network connection. Mr. Emeka, are you still with us? I can't hear you well. I can't hear you well. It's echo. Yes, I'm hearing it. The network has been quite uh, messy, but let's see if we can just get your thoughts in closing on the position of organized labor, which was part of the negotiation, on what will make it easier for Nigerians to deal with this high cost of living occasioned by inflation and a hike in the price of PMS. Network is allowing Mr. Chuksemeka hear us on the program and would have to end that call and just remind you of some of the notable developments in the news as it regards the prize war ongoing between NNPCL, which at this moment is the sole buyer of products from the largest single train refinery in the world at 650,000 barrels per day production capacity, having received 30 million liters of crude oil from the federal government in trenches. This was in an agreement that was to also regulate the price of products from Dangote refinery. You would recall that on Sunday, 16.3 million liters of petrol was lifted from Dangote refinery, but the price became a point of controversy. On the one hand, the NNPCL told Nigerians that it bought it at 868 naira per liter. Dangote refinery refuted this comment and said they bought it at 760 naira per liter. 
Now, whilst these challenges began to affect the pricing, Nigerians were greeted by a template where fuel is now selling at 915 naira per litre in cities like Lagos and 1,019 naira in cities like Miduguri. Now, this challenge is on what it pertains for the purchasing power of an average earner. Whilst the Guardian newspaper told us earlier that it will cost 70,000 naira to fuel the average utility car, the challenge is now on commuters who are now required to pay more than a 50% increment on their transport fares. And you heard Engineer eBay citing distances which used to go for 400, 500 naira, now costing double that amount, 1,000 naira. Now, and we're looking to get the closing thoughts of Mr. Chuksemeka. The network rudely interrupted him. Let's reconnect with him this morning and get his thoughts in closing. Hello, Mr. Emeka, can you hear us? I can hear you now. To the room yeah, I can hear you now. Table. Okay, okay, what? Waiting for a better... But, um, a prize war has, has been a thing of challenge. It's a, it's a challenge that Nigerian government needs to step in. The Tunubu government needs to step in and end this. Because, to be honest, every Nigerians are suffering. Nigerians are passing through hell. I can tell you with all honesty, most cars are now on the road. People are trekking. Yesterday, somewhere in, 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 in Obalinde, I saw people trekking from across Todd Mainland Bridge. From Obalinde to across Todd Mainland Bridge to Yanuogo. That is, that is a, a unnecessary suffering. Nigerians are suffering because of the increase in price. It's affecting virtually everything. Every aspect of life is being affected by this. And that is the reason why we were emphasizing from, the, from day one that this subsidy issue should be looked into critically before an announcement was to be made. Now, because the government has made an announcement and leave it open, the tigers and the lions in the oil and gas industry, the mafias are, be are beginning to manipulate the whole, the whole structure. But that even marketers are accusing, are trying to tell Dangote, Dangote, you cannot sell at lower price. This is, this is great. This is great going on. Because these people are trying to, trying to put us in a box put every Nigerian in a box so that nobody can say a word. That's the truth. The oil and gas sector is a mafia-driven sector, both from exploration down to the, to the, to that, to the upstream. Everything is all about, all, all about cabals. So that's why the government needed to, because that PIA, the PIA Act was to help Nigerians. It was supposed to help Nigerians. But we, we found out that the implementation of the PIA Act Act is very very poor, and that's where the people, that's, that's where NMPC and the regulators need to come in and be able to find a way so that Nigerians can benefit. This is a country that has crude, and yet we are not fine. We can't have petrol in our in our filling stations. We can't even buy it. It's a mess. So Nigerian, the Nigerians, Nigerians, the, 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 the NMPC and the regulators and the government needs to step up and find a way and put a stop to this unnecessary price violations and price war going on. We need to get Nigerian, Nigeria working. And we need Nigerians to be able to buy this, the, the, the price. Like my counterpart said, the increase is 50%. It's almost 100%. Now, if you are going to, if you are going to put this in perspective to what, what, we are, what we have been suffering in the past one year, more than a year now since this announcement was made concerning price subsidy, we are going to have another inflation coming up. We are going to have people selling things astronomical. It's, it's, it's so funny. It's so funny that Nigeria, a country that produces crude oil, has only one refinery that is functional. And that refinery that is functional is owned by a private sector. It's a funny thing. And this, 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 the other, Nigeria has four refineries. These four refineries, none is working. If we have at least two refineries working and other private sectors, there will be competitiveness. Now, because there is only one refinery working, we have a, that same monopoly still playing up. If NMPC is going to give to Goa 350,000 metric barrels to, to, to refine, give to Port Harcourt refinery about 300,000 barrels to refine, I can tell you with all honesty, we will be having this talk we are having here on this, on, in the media. Because everybody will be, there will be different discussions from different refineries. And everybody will be putting up that price war. 
that price differential. And we will have a competition where people will say, okay, I will sell at 500. The truth is that they are putting us in a box. But the marketers, but Dangote, they are putting us in a box. That is why I, 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 I emphasize and I say it with, all, with every sense of, sense of humility that Dangote is, putting us, is trying to find a way to, to put everybody in a box where we will all fall to his down to his tune. Well, Mr. Mekachooks, we thank you for your time on the program. I'm afraid time would not permit for us to go any further. However, we appreciate you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you so much.